Welcome back to another video. My name is Chad Johnerson. I am your Denver Modern Agent. And today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I know I'm not outside touring homes with you guys, um, but we're gonna be diving into what is the cost of living in Denver and maybe some things that you think that you know you might need to think about and maybe some things that you might not even consider when moving to a city like Denver. So. If you're looking forward to finding out more information about the cost of living in Denver, well, this video is gonna be for you. You're gonna to wanna to stick around because I'm gonna be providing some information that you probably didn't even think you needed to know. First thing we're gonna do is talk about the cost of rent in Denver in comparison to the national average. Denver's rent is around $1,750 a month, whereas the national average is just over $1,100. Now year over year, Denver has seen a substantial increase of 5%, which is much larger than the 0.8% that we've seen nationally in rent increases. Now I can attest that Denver does have a relatively high uh, rental cost. I mean, I live in Aurora, which is just east of Denver, and I live in a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment, and it costs me around $1,500 a month for just my rent, and that is a luxury apartment. Now I will say it comes with some great amenities. I mean, I have the opportunity to use two great pools and hot tubs. Um, there's a 24 hour business center and conference room a 24 hour gym, two dog runs, three premium event club rooms, and so much more. But those are just a few of the amenities included in my rent. Well, I talked about utilities, so why not just dive into that right now? Because utilities are not included in my base rent, right? So you're gonna have to expect to you know, cover costs like electricity, gas, internet, things of that nature. And so for myself personally, my average electricity runs me around 45 to 50 dollars a month that is kind of averaging out summer and winter months now obviously in the summer you're going to be running that electric bill up a little bit higher because you're going to need that ac on it does get pretty hot here in denver in the summers and it's a dry heat now in the winters it cools off yeah quite a bit i mean we do get some snow here but it is very moderate honestly down in the flatlands here in denver um, it isn't getting real cold right until you get up into the foothills on the west side of denver over there in Lakewood, Golden, up into Morrison, Evergreen, places like that. Now, obviously your electric bill or your gas bill is gonna be running a little higher in the winter if you're living in those areas, or you could be, expect to be paying for cords of wood. You know, wood can run you anywhere from 200 bucks a cord um, upwards. I mean, and it's, it's necessary if you have a wood burning stove. Some other common utilities that you should be aware of, right, is the cost of water, sewer, garbage, those are gonna be, you know, 10, 15, maybe up to $30 uh, a month for some of those utilities. Internet, I pay 60 bucks a month for my 100 uh, megabytes up and down speed, which is pretty decent internet. But if you want to upgrade to the gigabyte speed that costs you about $80 a month, and then they have a lower end for I think about $40 a month. So it really depends on what you need. So what is the cost though of homes in Denver. Well, let's get into that. Year over year, we've seen a substantial increase in home prices here in the Denver metro area, ranging anywhere from 14% all the way up to 16.5% increase in price. So the median sales price for both attached and detached homes combined runs you around $535,000, whereas the average for those combined is around $615,000. Now the detached alone, your median home price is just under 600,000 at 581, and the average for your detached actually runs you all the way up to $687,000 here. Now for the attached homes, so your, your townhomes and condos, the median sales price is 375,000, whereas the average was roughly around $437,000. Now, in comparison to other major metro areas, this might not sound crazy, but if you're moving from a smaller area to here, yeah, that, that might be a little bit shocking. But if you need help with anything real estate related, don't hesitate, reach out, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I'd be happy to help you put you in touch with 
some great local partners here to help you on that path to home ownership. All right, let's get onto the topic of transportation. So what can you expect to pay in transportation costs when you're living in Denver? Well, if you are the type of person that likes to use public transit, then you're gonna be looking at about $114 a month for what is known as local access on the RTD regional transportation system that we have here in Denver. Now, what is local access? I mean, that's everything kind of immediately in the Denver metro area. There is another upgrade for a regional access, which runs you $200 a month, and that gets you access you know, to and from the airport for free, and then beyond the Denver metro area to places like um, Boulder, and I think as far south as Colorado Springs. But I don't use public transportation, so I'm not too well versed in it, but it is, you know, it is a, a great option for people living in the city here, as we do have great public transit options. Now, if you're looking to just use it for a couple hours or the entire day, you know, that can range anywhere from $3 up to $10.50. It just depends how long are you going to be using the public transit for and what are you using it for ultimately. Now, if you're like me and you have a car and you enjoy driving and getting out to the mountains and being active, doing things like that, right, getting away from the city, then expect to pay around $4,900 at least for your vehicle and maintaining it and filling it up with gas and keeping it up to par, right? Because you're gonna go through seasons, you might need a set of, of winter tires if you, know, you live more in the foothills. Gas, my gas alone, right, is gonna cost me about $300 a month because I drive a lot in order to help you guys you know, I need to be driving and seeing properties and, and checking them out. So that right there alone is about half of my yearly budget is fuel. So keep that in mind as we continue through this topic. Now for a small family, you're looking to spend around $11,000 at least on your transportation, right? I don't know, maybe you're running to kids soccer games or you got baseball games or football or basketball or whatever, right? You're driving around, you're, you're taking care of your kids and making sure you're there for them. So it's gonna, it's gonna cost you a little bit more, right, to have a vehicle in, in the metro area. Now, obviously, these costs really do ultimately depend on how active are you and how active is your family? Are you driving up to the mountains every single weekend to go skiing or snowboarding or to go hiking or biking or fishing or hunting? You know, that's going to start to add up, right? What type of vehicle are you driving? Are you driving a truck or are you driving a fuel efficient car? Really, it's all boils down to what your needs are and what you really want to do and take advantage of while you're living here in Colorado. Well, since we just talked about outdoor activities, I figured I might as well just factor in ski pass costs. You know, a lot of the people that moved to Denver, they're, they're going to be skiing or snowboarding as well. So I just wanted to include that in this list as well. Probably didn't think you're going to see that in a video like this, but we're just going to talk about what it is for an adult average cost here. I'm going to go over a couple of the main passes and break down prices, and then I'll link all the information down below for those. If you are interested in ski passes, definitely check them out. But the main two passes I want to talk about are Epic and Icon passes. So the Epic Pass is gonna run you around $783 for the 2021-2022 season. And then the Epic Local Pass is $200 cheaper at 583. Now the Icon Pass is a little more expensive and runs around $1,050. And the Base Pass for that runs around $779. Now those two passes are arguably some of the best for Colorado skiing and skiing in the nation in general. I mean, there are so many mountains on it. You can take advantage of it really if you love to travel and ski and snowboard, if you wanna fly even to, you know, to Canada or down to uh, South America, even Japan, they have those as well. So there are mountains on those passes, which are phenomenal. I mean, if you have a travel itch and you love to ski and snowboard, it is a great combination. You now, two honorable mentions I wanted to bring up were the Mountain Collective and the Powder Alliance passes, those run you $499 and they're not gonna be as extensive as the Icon or the Epic, but they are great alternatives to those passes if you are looking for something more budget conscious. All right, let's move on to the topic of food and groceries in Denver. The first thing I wanna to touch on is if you are cooking at home. Um, there's an MIT study that says on average, a single adult will spend around $3,800 a year cooking at home. Now, if you don't cook at home frequently, um, I know I am personally guilty of it. I do like to go out and enjoy the restaurants around Denver because there's a phenomenal scene for them here. It's gonna cost you a little more, right? 
the typical meal here at more of a, a casual dining area low end is it'll run you anywhere from 15 to 25 dollars including the tip right in that overall cost per person now if you're going to be getting alcohol and dessert and you know a full-on meal or you're going to go to a nicer restaurant expect to pay you know 30 to 50 dollars a person right it's it is definitely uh, more pricey for some of the restaurants around here but I mean, they offer great food and it is well worth the experience and spending time with, with your loved ones or with your friends. So take advantage of the food scene here in Denver if you can and get out there and let me know what some of your guys' favorite restaurants are. Well, after talking about food, I felt it made the most sense that we should probably talk about exercise, fitness, and entertainment. <laughs> So if you are an active person like myself and you do enjoy going to a gym, on average, you know, the, the monthly membership fees for those can bump up to around $50 a month. It really depends on the type of gym you're going to and what you need for your training purposes. But for myself, I have a 24 hour gym. Uh, I don't need to go anywhere for my, for my gym access and to work out. I get it for free. So I don't have that expense over me, but there are good options that are relatively cheap around the area like Avasa Fitness um, or 24 Hour Fitness or stuff like that where you know you don't have to pay it 50 bucks a month. It really, you know, you could you can do it for 15 or 20 a month, right? On the topic of entertainment though, there is a bunch of great attractions around here. We have an amusement park uh, in Lakewood. We have a great zoo here in Denver. We have the botanical gardens, which are absolutely beautiful definitely check it out when you get a chance we have amazing museums i mean we have the the colorado rockies here the denver broncos uh, the colorado avalanche i mean you have all sorts of professional sports as well so expect to factor that in if you are a person that loves to indulge in ent entertainment this will be a major cost i think for you in denver because there is no shortage of things to do. Now let's say you just wanna to go to the movie and have a little more of a low key night. Yeah, that's gonna run you around $12.50 for the ticket, but you know, everyone wants popcorn and soda too. So that could run you up real quick, you never know. But it is a great alternative to um, some of these other great live events as well, uh, if you wanna be a little more budget conscious. Now the last thing I wanna to touch on is the taxes in Denver. So I grew up in Montana where I didn't have sales tax and I was blessed for that. <laughs> and I didn't understand how much property tax there was there because I never owned a property in Montana. But in Denver, your sales tax is on the lower end at 4.75%. Um, and that is just for the city tax. Now there's also a state tax on top of that for 2.9% and then a regional transportation tax of 1% and that is going to cover the RTD and the public trans uh, transportation system that we have and allow it to be maintained to the standard that it is. And this would not be a Colorado video if we did not talk about recreational marijuana. In Denver, you're gonna expect to pay around a 15% recreational tax on the use of marijuana, um, which you know, that's something that you might need to factor in. Uh, I personally don't have to um, worry about that, but obviously it is a very, very popular thing for the residents here living in Colorado, especially with it being legal. And it is a great booster and uh, addition to our local economy here in the Denver metro area. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, breaking down some of the common expenses and what to expect when you're either relocating here to Denver, or maybe these are some things that you never even considered and, and you're just finding them now. So if you found some value, be sure to leave a like for me. It really helps out a ton with the channel. Um, be sure to subscribe, turn on those post notifications. And in the comments below, I want you guys to let me know if there is anything specific that you want me to cover in future videos, as always, don't hesitate to reach out, send me a text, shoot me an email, give me a call. I love hearing from you guys. I love being able to help you out. If you guys are looking for some new builds, be sure to check out these videos right here.